invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Pasco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventures. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Pasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, most wonderful thing about America is the system of a transportation they got here. Like a fellow has told me, Luigi, in America, is nothing easier than to get it taken. If you want to go someplace, they got a streetcars, buses, a taxis, a subways. And yesterday, I'm even reading the paper how one fella is across the whole country by thumb. <laughs> of course, the fastest way to travel here is by airplane. You should see those airplanes, Mamma Mia. All day long, they flying over Chicago. And I know they all are going to Washington. Because every time I look up, it's a say on the plane, DC-6. <laughs> <laughs> Next, the fastest thing to airplane in Chicago is the taxi. No, no, I make a mistake, Mamma Mia. Faster than a taxi is a pedestrian. <laughs> He's got to be faster or sooner would there be no pedestrians on it. <laughs> but I'm not trusted the taxis. So, Mamma Mia, I'm a user center to the other transportation system right now, and I'm going to go to my night school class and I'll take a bus. America, I love you. You like a papa to me. From ocean to ocean. <laughs> Ah, here comes my bus. Good evening, Mr. Bus Driver. All right, step up and have your dime ready. <laughs> sure, here. Ten pennies. Everybody's got ten pennies. Two nickels, a dollar. Nobody's got dime. But a pennies. Pennies, that's a good American money. I know. Here's your dime. Thank you. Put it in the slot. All right. Oh. oh. Well? He's a fall on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I will find it. I will find it here. All right. Now step to the rear of the bus. But, uh... Well, what do you want now? Please, I'm a, like a transfer. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to aggravate me. Here's your transfer. Thank you. That's two cents. Well? Please, you got to change it for a quarter? <laughs> when it comes to transfers, they never got pennies. Only nickels, dimes, quarters. Here's your change. Thank you. And step to the rear of the bus! Mr. Bus Driver. What's the matter now? All the people that pushed up together in the back of the rear. There's nobody in the front. <laughs> I like it that way. Now step to the rear of the bus. All right. Uh... Oh. Please, Mr. Bus Driver, I'm no mean to fall down, but the bus is a start to suddenly. Who started suddenly? You trying to say on account of me you fell to the floor? I'm no say. Oh. What's the matter? Oh, my thumb is a hurt to me. Oh. Building up a case, huh? Oh, please, please, I'm not building anything. I'm just to go to school. Yeah, well, you ain't going to get away with it. I got 300 witnesses in the back of this bus. What's your name? Uh, Luigi Basco, what do you want to my name for? Your address. 21 and not the Hollister Street. Oh, my thumb is a heart. Stop appealing to the people! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you all witnessed what happened. Will you please pull out these cards? Mamma me, all because I'm going to step to the rear of the bus. All right, class. 
Quiet, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Present. Mr. Harwood? Present. Mr. Olson? Present. Mr. Schultz? Birthday cake. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, why do you say birthday cake? With three presents, I figure there must be a party. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, you're acting silly. Then somebody spiked the punch. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, fellow boobers. Who oh, would I be a sensation in television? <laughs> Milton Schultz. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please. Now, class, tonight we're taking up that grammatical part of speech known as the object. Now, who can give us a sentence with an object? I can. All right, Mr. Horowitz, what is the sentence? I object. <laughs> no, Mr. Horowitz, that's not what I want Now, can anybody else in the class give me an example of an object? If no one else can, Miss Balding I will gladly give you 50 sentences containing objects And I hope everyone falls on him <laughs> Oh, what a smart cop <laughs> I know you can, Mr. Olson But perhaps first someone else would like to try Mr. Basco, you haven't said anything. Suppose you give us a sentence with an object in it. Step up to the rear of the bus. <laughs> well, that's very good. What's the object? My thumb. <laughs> your thumb? How did your thumb get into this? Bus is a stop and I'm a fall on it. <laughs> what? Mr. Basco, you're not making much sense. Yeah, that's what I like about Luigi. Good old-fashioned honest stupidity. <laughs> Wait a minute. Maybe Luigi is trying to tell us something. Sure, oh, by jumping, yeah, minute, his thumb is really swollen. Yeah. That's right, Miss Spalding. And if you don't mind, I'm like it to go home and soak it. Ach, Luigi, if this really happens what you said about the bus, then you are doing the wrong thing. You shouldn't soak the thumb, you should soak the company. <laughs> Your whole Luigi, they, they might give you $500 for the thumb. No, thanks. I'm not going to sell. <laughs> You little dumb cop. I remember once my brother Ludwig stepped off a streetcar, got shoved by a taxi into a bus, and the bus knocked him 11 feet. Just then a cop came along. Who was a lucky thing for a Ludwig, huh? What lucky? The cop gave him a ticket for jaywalking. <laughs> smile, Luigi. I'm just trying to shear you off. Uh, Schultz, you really think Luigi should uh, should ask the company for money? Why not? Luigi, you got it an open and shut up case. <laughs> Take my advice. Well, uh, I don't know, Schultz. Oh, go ahead, Luigi. What can you lose by asking them? Can the bus company make trouble for you? Can they hound you? Can they lock you up in jail? Schultz, can they? Why not? After all, they're only inhuman. <laughs> My friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Oh, Pasquale, I'm in a terrible trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Since I'm a bringing you from Italy, always you getting into trouble. Oh, why wasn't I smart enough to bring over here Perry Como? <laughs> There's a fellow who's had a nothing. Today he's making a fortune with his own barber shop. <laughs> Well, my little pumpkin ahead, what's your trouble now? Oh, Pasquale, it's a long story. Yesterday when I'm going to school, the bus is started suddenly, I'm going to fall down and I hurt my thumb. I'm asking the class for help. Schultz is say, ask them for money. But this morning, I'm going to get a letter from the bus company because the driver is taking my name and address. What's the trouble I got? So, sure. <laughs> what do you expect when you go for information to a bird brain like a Schultz? When all the time you can come to Pasquale for facts whose head is a ticker with them. <laughs> You're so right, to Pasquale. You biggest a tickhead I know. <laughs> That's a funny thing. And when I'm a say it, it's a come out of different. <laughs> well, give me the letter you got, and maybe I can still save you. All right, to hear. Mm-hmm. Ooh. -hoo. Uh huh. Oh, ho! Oh. Bad, bad. Pasquale, you're holding the letter up upside it down. <laughs> That's the way you hand it to me. <laughs> Let me see you. Dear Mr. Bosco, a CUS police. What the Pasquale? It's to say, see us, please. 
All right. All right. <laughs> Come tomorrow at 10 a.m. Hey, Luigi, what for do they want to see you in the night time? Pasquale, a.m. is the main morning. Who's asking you? <laughs> Now, let me finish. When do you come tomorrow, ask for Mr. Fenton, who's the head of our clams department. <laughs> That's the clams department. Luigi, if you keep interrupting, how do you expect to learn anything? <laughs> oh, there's no doubts about it. You in the worst of trouble of your life. Huh? Biggest crime in this country is to fall down in a public vehicle and strike your thumb in a bus. And you know why? Why? That's what they call a bus strike. <laughs> Interference with a transportation. Mamma mia, Pasquale, what am I going to do? There's only one way out for you, the American way. you got to sue. <laughs> Ah, that's the meaning you take the bus company to court and you take away everything they got. Pasquale, what am I going to do with all of those buses? <laughs> oh, you stupid boob. You don't get all of the buses. If you win, you get maybe five or six. <laughs> a dumb question this man asked. But, Pasquale, is this a nice thing to do? Sue a bus company? What are you talking about, Luigi? In America, everybody's a sue. Look, if you go in a restaurant, the waiter's a drop a hot plate of soup down your neck. You don't wipe it off, or you sue. <laughs> you walk on the street, you trip on a piece of sidewalk. Before you hit the ground, there's already a lawyer there helping you sue. <laughs> this is the way they do things in America? That's a common sense, Luigi. Judges have to live. <laughs> you know, judges are done to get any commissions on the traffic tickets. The cops, so they keep all of the money. <laughs> Well, if I was a, to, like you say, sue this a bus a company, what would it be like? Well, Luigi, is all the kinds of suits. So let me explain to you. There's a lawsuits, a civil suits, a criminal suits, and just a plain suits. That's called a herring a bone. <laughs> Well, Pasquale, what kind of suit is it called if I'm a suit about the company? Well, it depends. Are you liable to get the money from them? Are they liable to get the money from you? Are you liable to go to jail? Anything's liable to happen. That's what they call a libel suit. <laughs> I want to go to jail. If you don't mind, Pasquale, I'm rather not to sue. Luigi, the choice is a no more with you. Look at the letter the bus companies are send you. See that a red seal on it? Yes, sir. That don't mean the company's approval by good housekeeping. <laughs> in this country, red does mean only one thing. FBI is investigating. But, Scully, all I'm going to do is to fall under my thumb. Stop her with the propaganda. <laughs> First, the thing we're going to do is hire you a lawyer. A lawyer? How am I going to afford the one? Cost you nothing. The lawyers, you get a half of what do you get. Of course, I'm going to get a little something for my advice. <laughs> But, Pasquale, what if they don't give me money and they send me to jail? Well, Luigi, in that case, we're not a selfish. Yes, sir. We let you keep the whole thing. <laughs> Life with Luigi will continue in just a moment. And now, for the second act of Luigi Vasco's adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, I'm asking a question. If a man is to fall down in a bus, what should have happened? He should have picked himself up, no? Not in America. Over here, when you fall down in a bus, the driver is attacking your name. He's a maker. People have fill out the cards. The bus companies send you by the letter. You got to hire a lawyer, go to see the doctor, sue. Then there's a judge, a jury, witnesses, and an insurance company. Before you know it, the 50 people, they're making a living from you, Tom. <laughs> anyway, I'm supposed to go to the bus company today, but the Pasquale is telling me no go. Wait to hear till he's a coming with a lawyer. I don't know what the kind of fellow he is, but I think he must be something like me. Very shy. Because in a Pasquale's arrestant, I may hear people talk about him and they call him a shyest. <laughs> well, anyway. Anyway, Mamma Mia, I'm a think there's a lot of trouble to go through to get back a $10 
back at the bailiff from the bus company. When in is a come up Pasquale with a his lawyer. Luigi, well, how's it feel to you, Tom? Bad? That's good. No, it is just a little sprain, Pasquale. What do you know? Luigi, I want you should meet your lawyer, Mr. Prescott. Mr. Prescott, that's a Luigi Bosco. Fella who was a run over by a bus. That's funny, I wasn't a run over. Quiet. Hello, Mr. Prescott. Ah, uh-uh, don't shake hands with a fractured thumb. Mr. Basco, it's a wonder to me how you could stand up under that excruciating pain that must be racking your body. It's not so bad, Mr. Prescott. Luigi, I'm going to break your neck. <laughs> who's no better how you Tom feels? You or this smart lawyer who's went through college? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Pasquale. Ah, that's quite all right, Mr. Basco. I know how you feel. You've been through a terrible experience and you don't want to talk about it. Now... Now, Mr. Basco, how much money do you think you deserve for this dreadful experience you've been through? Because of the callous negligence of a public carrier. Nobody was a carrying me. I was on a bus. <laughs> Luigi, in a plain of words, tell the man how much money you want. Well, uh, if you think I should have money, ten dollars for the doctor bill will be enough. Ten dollars? Luigi, Mr. Prescott is going to walk right out on you. You've got to ask her for bigger money. Twenty-five dollars? No. Mr. Basco, the mental anguish, the pain and suffering you've been through cannot be paid for in dollars and cents. Then a matter would drop with the case. Luigi! (laughs) Talk like that is un-American. Go ahead, Mr. Prescott. However, Mr. Basco, since your misfortune must be measured in terms of money, I would place the value in the thousands. Thousand? Sure, Luigi. Look at that swollen thumb. You realize how expensive is it going to be for you? Say you go bowling. You can't put that thumb in a regular ball. You've got to have a special one made for you. But a Pasquale, I'm going to never go bowling. You should. It's a very healthy exercise. <laughs> Mr. Basco, Mr. Pasquale has brought up a rather obscure case. But I can see where the loss of the use of a man's thumb would ruin his life. If, um... He were about to embark on a career as a concert pianist. Huh? Who's this a concert pianist? You. Me? Oh, you lucky pup for you. <laughs> yeah, but I was never played the piano. Luigi, when you was to have that accident on the bus, I was about to send over a teacher. <laughs> now, you'll have to give up those concerts in the Hollywood Bowl. That's easily ten, fifteen thousand dollars Fifteen thousand dollars Then there's the cancellation of your triumphant return tour of the Middle West. Ten thousand dollars Ten a thousand? And forfeiting that five thousand dollar concert at Carnegie Hall. Of course, not to mention the loss of your friendship with Tuscanini, which cannot be measured in dollars and cents. Then the member with the Shut up, Luigi. <laughs> then of course your command performance before the king and queen is through. Sure. Naturally, you can't take any of the money out of that country, but you could have come out with three thousand dollars worth of cashmere sweaters. That's a lot of cash. From there, you would have swung over to Paris. <laughs> My fellow pooper. Well, Luigi, what's with you in the thumb? Sure, sir, I don't know what's happening. All I know is I'm a got a piano in my bedroom and I'm a soon to bust a company for hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Luigi, nobody's thumb is worth a hundred thousand dollars unless maybe if he's a butcher. <laughs> Now tell me, what's this with the piano? Well, if Pasquale is a bring a lawyer, he's a telling me with this a bad time, I'm not going to make a hundred thousand dollars because the Tuscanini is a mad to me, and I'm not going to play for the King of England. <laughs> and that's why I'm a got a piano in my bedroom. <laughs> Luigi, are you for shimmered? <laughs> Luigi, do you know you are committing perjury? Yeah, for that, when you got to court, they can take away from you the citizen papers. But I'm not the got the citizen papers. But they take away any papers they catch you with. The Chicago Times. They... <laughs> but sure, so you know me. The last thing I'm going to do is to tell a lie. Yeah. But Pasquale is telling me I'm a got to. Otherwise, the bus company is sending me to jail. Look at this letter. The bus company is sending me. Let me see that. 
Bitte, Vater. Ja. Ach, you stupid cop. This means they want to settle with you. You go down there right now. Talk with them and get it over with. Sure, so maybe you're right. I'm going to go right there now. You think I'm going to get into trouble? Of course not. And don't be so worried. Cheer up, Luigi. We like me. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, my rheumatism is killing me. Mr. Fenton, this is Mr. Basco. Luigi Basco. You have his file on your desk. Thank you, Mr. Young Lady. Uh, uh, Mr. Fenton, I was uh, I was uh, working all over your big bus building, but I was uh, no able to find the Uclem's office department. I, I would have come two hours sooner, but you yes, see... Yes, yes, it's quite plain, Mr. Basco. Sit down. Uh, thank you. Here's uh, your letter. And like you say, I should have come here and I'm bringing my thumb. Where is it? Right to here under my left hand. Not your thumb, the letter. I see your thumb. You've got about three yards of bandages on it, splints and a brace. Your doctor didn't do that, did he? No, it wasn't my lawyer. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Fenton, I'm going to want to make it trouble. Well, good. Cigar? Oh, no, 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 thank you. I'm going to have a smoke. Once a long time ago in Italy, my Uncle Pietro, he's, uh, he's uh, give us a goat a cigar to smoke. And the poor goat, he's uh, getting so dizzy, he's uh, give her two quarts of milk without the hit in a pail. Now, Mr. Basco, let's get down to cases. I received your lawyer's letter this morning. One hundred thousand dollars. That's preposterous. You people think you can go around making nuisance claims for big money. Mr. Fenton, the... please, please. I'd be happy to go home and forget... Oh, the... so that's your attitude. You're willing... Now, you're not willing to discuss with me. You think you'd, uh, you'd do better by bringing this case to trial. Let me tell you, our bus company has a 39-year record of public service equal to none. And the courts know that. I'm going to know that too, Mr. Fenton. I think you got a very nice uh, bus. Uh, my favorite the color is the yellow with the green. Is you... Oh, <laughs> sarcastic, eh? Huh? I suppose you have some suggestions on how to improve our service. Oh, no. Well, maybe one. You know how your driver is always a yellow step up to the rear of the bus? Well, I think you should make it the rear of the bus twice as big as the front. <laughs> So then the driver can have the whole front for himself. Oh, so that's what you're getting at. As your lawyer's letter states, you intend to prove that our driver used loud, coarse, and abusive language. Well, Mr. Basco, that has never happened in our buses. And I'll prove it to you right now. Oh, please, Mr. My Fenton. secretary, Miss Burton, has sent for the driver involved in your accident. Uh, Miss Burton, is our driver outside? Good. Send him in. Ah, uh, come in, Mr. Hetherington. Uh, Mr. Basco, is this the bus driver? Yes, sir, that's a him. Hetherington, Mr. Basco says that you use coarse and abusive language with him. Is this true? Mr. Fenton, far be it from me to impugn the gentleman's integrity. <laughs> but it has constantly been a source of infinite satisfaction to me to convey my passengers to their destinations with the utmost safety, security, and dispatch. Huh? <laughs> there, Mr. Basco, you have the truth from our driver's own mouth. I think uh, since uh, yesterday, he's a change of his mouth. <laughs> Hetherington, do you remember this passenger? Indubitably. Inhobitably? <laughs> Indubitably. He boarded my bus at approximately 8 p.m. What makes you remember this passenger? Well, when I opened the door, he entered and shouted at me, Good evening, sir. No, I'm a shot. Just a minute, Mr. Basco. He then handed me ten pennies, throwing my coin changer completely off balance. Go on. He then threw himself upon the floor, causing the bus to swerve, <laughs> thereby endangering the lives of my passengers. <laughs> Mamma mia, if I'm going to have $100,000, I'm going to give it to you. In that case, Mr. Basco, <laughs> will you sign this paper releasing us from all claims? All right, sir. I'm looking for Luigi Basco. Oh, oh, there you are, you stupid boob. But come outside. I want to talk to you. But we were discussing... I'm discussing with him first outside, and then we come back. <laughs> so Schultz is no better than me, huh? You go down to bus the company yourself, huh? Well, what's happened? Oh, Pasquale, he's terrible. They bring in this bus driver. All of a sudden, he's a talk like Ronaldo Coleman. 
is to prove I'm a start of the accident. They say I should have signed a release of paper. Sign a release? Uh -huh. Luigi, you know what that's a mean when an immigrant is a sign a release? What? Once you sign the paper, you release yourself from the United States. You're never going to come back. <laughs> What am I going to do? Well, uh, my lawyers are very angry with you, but I think I can still get them back on your case. But this time, I'm not helping you for money or for friendship. This time, it's for something that's bigger than both of us. <laughs> I know, it's Russia. That's right. You hit the nail right on her head. I'm a caller right now. Rosa! 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 You called me, Papa! <laughs> yes. Come here, my little butterfly. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. <laughs> Rosa Luigi is thinking of marrying you and going on a honeymoon. What do you say to that? Luigi, can I go along with you? Oh, shut up your face. All right, Luigi. Now we call up the lawyer to come right down. Yeah, I mean, I've got a money for the phone booth. You got a necklace, Luigi? No, all I've got is a quarter. Papa, I got five pennies. Good. Luigi, take these five pennies and go inside and ask that claims a fella for a nickel. All right. Excuse me, Mr. Fenton, you got a nickel for five pennies? No, I'm sorry. Perhaps oh. Mr. Hetherington has. Uh, Mr. Bus driver, you got a nickel for five pennies? Pennies, pennies, pennies! What? Nobody's ever got a nickel a dime or a quarter! Control yourself, Mr. Hetherington. Step to the rear of the bus! <laughs> Mamma mia, now he's a talking with his own mouth. <laughs> Listen, you give me a nickel, I'm going to call up at the No, lawyer. Mr. Basco, please, that won't be necessary. I'll, I'll sign a $50 check to you this instant if you'll close the case. Please, I'm just the one to stay in America. Mr. Basco, you'll have no trouble. Just take this money and make me happy. All right. Well, Luigi, what's the key you? Ain't he going to call my lawyer? No, Pasquale, the case is a closer. Now I'm going to go home. Wait, Luigi, what about a Rosa? Goodbye, Pasquale. Like the driver is say. Step to the rear with the U-Bus. <laughs> and so, Mamma Mia, I'm never taught after so much trouble, everything is come out so fine. Bus the company is to give me fifty dollars. From this, I'm gonna give a Pasquale as a lawyer twenty-five dollars for talking it to me. Ten dollars to Pasquale is a thirty-five. Ten dollars a rental of the piano is a forty-five. Two dollars for a bandage, which makes a forty-seven, which leaves me nothing. Well, I'm gonna get three dollars, but I'm gonna count that to like nothing, because tomorrow when I'm gonna go to school, I'm gonna take a taxi. Good night, to Mamma Mia. And uh, Mamma Mia, you take care of yourself when you cross in the street. You never can tell where the those are goats. You're loving a son, Luigi Basco, the immigrant. <laughs> Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carroll Nash has starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Mary Ship as Miss Spalding, and Jody Gilbert as Rosa. Music is under the direction of Lynn Murray. Bob Stevenson speaking. For stories on the merry side of marriage, follow the adventures of the young couple in Young Love every Monday night on most of these same CBS stations. Be sure to hear Young Love tomorrow night. And now stay tuned for the latest madcap adventures of your favorite teenager, Corliss Archer, who follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.